Hello everyone and welcome to our, another uh, Storm Lobotics production. Um, this is The Scientist and um, today I'm going to talk about uh, quite an important uh, intriguing piece of um, research that um, um, is um, retrospective and um, I'm going to provide an overview around this, um, uh, this, this work on this research. Um, this is um, um, uh, an audio podcast um, in the series around the, the molecular storm gauge V2 um, and um, today's audio um, uh, or podcast is going to be about um, a, a topic relating the role of endogenous opioids in isochemic preconditioning um, and um, this research um, um, was a collaborative um, and um, novel novel at the time um, uh, um when it when uh, when um when uh it formally uh took place um it was collaborative between um um the university um uh college london ucl in london um and king's college in london and this and this research um uh looks at um the um the importance um and the function the function of uh, endogenous uh, opio opioids. Um, so, in context, um, it relates to um, um, those opioids that are inherently part of the a part of um, every every everyone's general internal internal physiology. But actually, also in relating to how um, how particular intervention can prevent um, uh, something known as um, um, something uh, something known as um, isochemia um, um, uh, or, um, or a sort of um, uh, a stopping of blood flow um, to to um, to to the um, uh, to the um, to the heart uh, around the heart around the heart and general physiology uh, physiology again and thus looks at um, uh, how this can be, uh, can be intervention can can potentially help um, or prompt um, uh, the prevention of um, 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 of um, my um, uh, sort of strokes and uh, stroke and heart attacks um, um, and um, ultimately um, uh, I um, in this in this regard this relates isochemic uh, isochemic I, I, isochemic or isochemia um, uh, preconditioning um, using and uh, what was done um, is um, a there was a um, uh, there was a a, a remote um, it was a remote forearm model that was implemented to actually mimic um, um, sort of preconditioning. So um, I'm going to read I'm going to um, provide an overview by um, re, um, reading the um, the um, overview in a, in a form of an abstract. Um, uh, listeners, and so this is what I've, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say. So a bit of background to begin with. So timely reperfusion of isochemic tissue in uh, prerequisite to um, is prerequisite. Sorry to improve outcomes of something known as um, coronary heart disease. But paradoxically, reperfusion causes uh, injury to issues. So. so so on the one side, um, uh, timely reperfusion, or that mean, uh, which means, um, which means, um, sort of context in relating to what allows um, 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 a decent blood flow of uh, blood flow through general physiology. Um, uh, um, uh, on the one side, um, it can pre um, is a prerequisite um, to preventing coronary heart disease because the the better the blood flow. Um, and and the better the blood flow, the more the the less probability of of um, atherosclerosis, for example, or coronary heart disease, um, uh, um, and um, ultimately other other conditions. But, but um, um, and on the on the on the on the sort of not so positive side is that with that with the blood flow with the rushing of blood flow. Um, it can also cause injury to tissues. So there has to be um, a, a general decent sort of um, um, a balance in, um, in, in relating to how blood, blood flows through general physiology, thus to ultimately um, be, um, uh, uh, provide advantage to, um, the, um, to individuals. 
So this concept is referred to as some as as something that is known as isochemia reperfusion. Um, studies studies had been thriving. Excuse me. Studies had been thriving to better understand um uh, isochemia reperfusion injury and to develop novel treatments to minimize this. One such approach um was um is is termed um is 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 termed and related to isochemic preconditioning um or IPC which entails brief brief um a sort of intimate in, in intermittent um, durations of alternate alternating isochemia and reperfusion th um, before or prior to prolonged period of index isochemia now in line with this um, endogenous endogenous um, um, opioids um, opioids and peptides um, and peptides are thought to play a role in IPC and using um, so the aims and objectives around this work um, when, it, when it took place was that using a, a human forearm model um, to sort of mimic um, uh, uh, isochemia uh, reperfusion injury, the work actually looked to assess the effect of non-selective opioid receptor antagonist, something that was known as naloxone. Um, naloxone um, on um, naloxone from a pharmacological perspective is actually um, a drug that um, sort of um, sort of has the effect something in between um, works um, uh, has something uh, something in the light uh, uh, something um, in, in its effects um, relating to uh, in between uh, in, in between working as an anti high sort of an anti hypertensive in some regard um, um, and also um, uh, as a kind of a a sort of um, um, uh, a, uh, a has has some link to to uh, um, internal endogenous opioids, um, but also um, has um, an effect that sort of um, almost blocks works as a as a as a an, anta an antagonist. And sort of blocks some of the pathway that um, that um, would um, cause um, uh, works as almost works like a blocking agent that mimics what would happen um, when um, reperfusion um, isochemia um, uh, isochemia takes place. So when there's like, for example, um, for example, when uh, uh, when um, when, for example, uh, um, uh, an area of 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 um, let's say, for example, um, uh, for example, uh, the the legs or arms, for example, are are numb for a little while for whatever reason, um, naloxone has that kind of that kind of uh, um, that kind of uh, pharmacological um, aspect to 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 to, uh, to the drug. Now, in 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 um, uh, in in so. Um, so using a human forearm model of, of isochemia reperfusion um, inju uh, injury, this th the work or the research um, looked to assess the effect of non-selective opioid receptor antagonist naloxone on protection of isochemic preconditioning. In addition, plasma uh, plasma concentrations um, of uh, endogenous endogenous opioids. Um, and one in particular that the research that the that the investigators were intrigued to investigate was um, um beta endorph and beta endorphin. So um the endogenous opioid that actually um uh, beta endorphin um as I'm sure um listeners would know would uh, would be that uh, opioid that stimulates or prompts a sense of feeling good or or um, positive etc. Um. And this was uh, this was to be a, this was looking to be investigated during an um, an um, uh, isochemic preconditioning uh, preconditioning stimulus. Um, so the methodology in this work was quite intriguing. So what what happened was uh, the role of um, uh, opioid receptor blockade um, naloxone in isochemia um, preconditioning 
or, 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 or remote isochemic preconditioning um, um, on, um, on healthy volunteers was, um, was determined. So in this research, healthy volunteers were recruited were recruited to participate in um, in uh, in prompting these particular in this particular um, in this particular um, uh, work to understand um, how naloxone um, has an effect um, and whether it has an effect to the extent that beta endorphins are also affected um, using a, a forearm model. So. In this work, healthy volunteers were were recruited or involved, um, so it gives the best chance of trying to understand um, what fit, what um, pharmacological intervention and general physiology would look um, would would do in in a healthy in a healthy group of volunteers, um, um, and so flow uh, alongside with this flow mediated something known as flow mediated dilatation. Um, was implemented and this was implemented on um, whereby basically on the forearm on the forearm um, around the forearm uh, forearm where where the where um, isochemic re, re, uh, isochemic um, preconditioning um, and isochemic um, isochemia reperfusion was being mimicked mimicked um, um, flow media dilatation was actually allowed the investigators and the researchers to understand what what was happening with the blood flow and in particular around the brachial around the brachial artery. So this is a main artery that runs um, down the forearm forearm um, on, on both on, on both arms and um, basic um, and is uh, and um, from from a, a general physiological perspective the brachial artery has a link to um, to the to the carotid um to the to the carotid sinus um and the jugular vein as well um in in um in a in a sort of um, more um more intricate um uh, uh, way of of in, in in a more intricate way so um flow media dilatation was was used or implemented to assess to understand the brachial um uh, the the uh, what well, uh, uh, to understand blood flow around the brachial artery, and this was measured by um, by um, uh, using um, uh, to, to determine flow immediate um, uh, flow uh, mediated dilatation or FMD. Um, um, this was measured um, by uh, in, um, by using an ultrasound technique to determine um, endothelial um, uh, endothelial or tissue isochemia reperfusion in injury. Now, basically, um, the endothelial um, endothelial is 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 um, is tissue um, 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 that is that is um, sort of this this um, that is um, a sort of this dispersed throughout general physiology as well. And basically, um, this um, this um, uh, a, a flow media dilatation or F FMD was actually used to um, to um, look at endothelial function and that's and generally flow media flow media flow mediated dilatation is a basis um, for determining what was what happens um, with tissue lining um, to the to major organs so this is why FMD was um, implemented through an ultrasound uh, an ultrasound um, uh, methodology um, and so, in line in line with this, as part of this methodology, using something known as uh, enzyme-linked immuno immunosorbent assay or ELISA, ELISA, um, um, beta endorphin of the the um, endogenous opioid beta endorphin um, um, was um, uh, or the levels or the titers. Um, um, of beta endorphin were determined or were looked to be determined or established um, and to understand whether it has a local effect to induce um, to prompt protection during injury so during uh, isochemic reperfusion injury so what this means is that if um, if the investigators were able to determine um, high volumes of beta endorphin during a time where um, where, for example, these volunteers 
these healthy volunteers um were under um uh, under uh, under uh, isochemic isochemic uh isochemic uh recondition preconditioning isochemic repro uh, reperfusion and um where where uh in insult um around um the the around the forearm where 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 um where the where um isochemic re um isochemic reperfusion um and using a forearm model um to mimic the injury is concerned the uh and uh, beta endorphin um uh the endogenous opioid beta endorphin was also measured by taking blood samples um from the healthy volunteers and the blood samples were were um were very um were were a minimum minimum amount um which um the uh, healthy volunteers were were informed about um in this in this research um before participating and and basically what happened was that um was that um it was uh, the end beta endorphin was uh, was quantified or was, uh, where the investigators seek to quantify the um amount of beta endorphin um through um through um using elisa elisa technique to establish whether it has a local effect to do in, again to induce uh, protection during uh, injury so when injury is occurring or when the when um when the the four when when uh, isochemic reperfusion uh, is being mimicked through the forearm model um uh, and where there is insult um around around um around the forearm and the break uh, around the uh, around um the artery then basically the investigators look to see if endogenous opioid would actually overwhelm um the 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 the, the, the site of injury so basically whether um whether they whether um have whether in a way how, um whether the, the volunteers whether they would whether sorry irrespective of whether they they um, were going uh, um whether they were having where they were um where were they where they were having this um where they had injury uh, as part of this um as part of this investigation that endorphin beta endorphin would actually overwhelm so they wouldn't feel so so um um uh, so it wouldn't feel as uh, there was there would be a lot of um sort of pain pain um during during this this um um, this um, investigation or part of the investigation so what happened was venous blood samples were collected from healthy volunteers during um the isochemic uh, preconditioning stimulus now uh, i'm going to um, highlight a bit about the results so isochemic reperfusion caused endothelial dysfunction um so the fmd the um flow mediated mediated dilatation highlighted that there was 6.7 plus or minus 0.7 um um and then pre pre um uh, uh versus uh, sorry versus pre uh, where there was um pre um uh pre um uh, me uh, me measurements as well um was 2.2.5 .2 um plus or minus 0.4 and then post um post um so after um the isochemic reperfusion injury was implemented it showed that um there was a, a p a p value which is 0.05 um, um where um uh, in in 10 in at least 10 of the participants who who were involved and this showed that um uh, uh, naloxone did not did not affect um the um protective effect of um isochemic preconditioning against endothelial um uh, isochemic reperfusion injury so that was the first sort of sort of set of um set of investigatory um uh, sort of um um analysis and then the fmd the fmd showed that um uh, in in another part of this that 6.1 plus or minus 0. Um, 0.4 versus pre um 6.5 plus or minus 0. 0.6 um and then post um post um where post uh, and then post naloxone um, plus isochemic preconditioning um, showed a value of um, 
um um a value of uh, just over um um uh, uh sorry a p value of greater than 0 0.05 um in in 10 of the participants the um plasma the plasma and beta endorphin uh, concentrations remained actually unchanged during the isochemic preconditioning stimulus so the overall conclusion around this research uh, was that um, the protective effects of IPC were not abolished by naloxone. So a naloxone, naloxone pharmacological intervention didn't actually do anything. Didn't didn't have didn't have uh, an effect. It abolished um, it abolished. Um, sorry, the IPC uh, IPC um, sorry um, uh, IPC isochemic preconditioning uh, um, effects were not abolished by naloxone. So, sorry. Um, so just to say naloxone did have some effect, but plasma beta endorphin concentrations did not change in response to the protective stimulus. So um, further, um, um, the overall sort of co um, conclusion around this was that is that further studies and investigations are still required. And this research is retrospective. It did take take place um, a little while ago. And there is, um, there is, um, uh, there's been a lot of research um, up until um, up uh, in, in the in in uh, up until uh, up until this particular research took place. There was a lot of research around this, and there are still some uh, investigators, uh, I believe, um, that are carrying on some of the work that's related at um, at University College in London. Um, but this work, um, if um, if any listeners are intrigued to to find out more, you can put these certain terminologies um, into um, into a search engine, uh, into um, into a into databases or search engines to understand more um, around around the literature. And these uh, terminologies include isochemic preconditioning, flow mediated mediated dilatation, reperfusion, uh, and cardiovascular disease. Um, and um, so this was a, a, an overview. Um, around uh, this particular topic on the role of endogenous opioids, opioids in isochemic preconditioning, um, and um, uh, um, if um, uh, uh, if anyone wants to know more about this work, is uh, check out uh, check out the literature um, initially. Um, but this has been um, uh, another audio podcast um, in the molecular um, storm uh, gauge V2. And uh, this has been another Storm Lobostics uh, production. Um, thank you for um, uh, taking time to uh, have a listen. Um, this has been um, uh, The Scientist. Uh, thanks again.